Hey, what's up guys, Andrew here. Today we're taking a look at the brand spanking new Lenovo IdeaPad 700. This one's going to be the lower end of the spectrum compared to the Y700. Alright, let's get started. Let's go and break down the specs on the base model. You're getting an Intel Core i5-6300HQ, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, a 15.6 inch anti-glare IPS display, 256GB PCIe SSD, and the retail price is $899 US. Here's a quick look at the internal components of the IdeaPad 700. On the bottom you got your 45 watt hour battery pack, which is a little smaller than the Y700 which comes in at 60 watt hour, 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD, two DIMM slots for your RAM, this model features one 80 gigabyte stick of DDR4, Intel dual band AC3165, and your two fans. 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD is very fast and zippy, and it comes at a price, that's why the base model is $849. Now let's take a look at the ports. On the left side you got your Kensington security lock slot, charging port, USB 2, an SD card reader, headset microphone jack combo, and your one key recovery pin which will help you recover your notebook. On the right side you got your power status and charge status LED indicators, two USB 3s, full size HDMI, and an Ethernet port. And as a bonus you do get a USB external DVD drive for no extra charge. This notebook is made mostly out of plastic and that's where the biggest difference are between this and the Y700, which is made mostly of aluminum. The plastic doesn't look cheap by any means, but it just doesn't have that premium look and feel of the Y700. The weight comes in at 5.1 pounds, which is a little lighter than the Y700, which comes in at 5.6 pounds. And its thickest point is 0.89 inches compared to the Y700, which is just over an inch. The interior's design aesthetics look pretty similar to the IdeaPad Y700 and I don't blame them. The Y700 features a slick looking design. The major differences here, this one features a plastic finish and the Y700 features a brush metal finish. Next up, let's take a look at build quality. There is some minor keyboard flex, especially towards the right side of the keyboard. However, it's pretty much on par with the other budget gaming notebooks. The top section of this notebook did pretty good with the exception of the middle, which tends to flex a little more. The display flex is not rigid at all thanks to the plastic construction. The Dell Inspiron 7559 also suffered from the same issue. This notebook's rocking a 15.6 inch anti-glare IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p Text and images are crisp, and the color accuracy is about average, just like the Y700. Nothing spectacular. For those of you that are curious, the Spider 4 Pro colorimeter reported 69% of sRGB and 53% of Adobe RGB. Also, the brightness levels were pretty good, on average I kept it around 70%. The viewing angles on this IPS panel does a pretty good job overall. The anti-glare coating on here does an excellent job of blocking out reflections. And here's a quick test of how far it'll tilt. This notebook's rocking the latest Intel Skylight Core i5-6300HQ. This is a quad-core chip that is a baby beast. Its bigger brother, which is the Core i7-6700HQ, is a beast. However, this chip will really hold its ground against many of today's applications. Now let's talk about the main attraction of the show and that's the GPU. This notebook features the NVIDIA GTX 950M with 4GB of DDR3 memory. And when you compare that to the Y700, that one features the NVIDIA GTX 960M with 4GB of GDDR5, which will yield much better performance. With that being said, you can play games like Overwatch, GTA 5, and Fallout 4 on medium to high settings. Here's a quick sample of GTA 5 running on medium settings at 1920 by 1080p. So far I'm getting around 29 to 33 frames per second. For better performance, you can drop your resolution to 1600 by 900 and get around 35 to 40 frames per second. It'll be a much improvement. Even while playing GTA 5 for around 45 minutes, the WASD keys on the left side remain pretty cool at around 27 to 29 degrees Celsius. The majority of the heat is going to come towards the right side of the notebook and usually average around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius. The palm rest was pretty cool as well and usually averaged around 29 to 35 degrees Celsius. Overall, the IdeaPad 700 did an excellent job of thermal cooling. There are two fans on this notebook, one for the GPU and one for the CPU. During light to medium usage, you can hardly hear these fans running. Even while put under pressure while playing games or using intensive 3D software, you can hear them running but they're not loud by any means. You're getting a large buttonless trackpad and the surface feels pretty slick. Also, the bottom right corner is pretty stiff, making it hard to push sometimes. Besides that, tracking and two-finger scrolling is pretty smooth overall. The notebook features a standard full-size keyboard with a 10-key numeric keypad. The small-shaped keys offer great tactile feedback and the key travel is solid. And yes, you do get a backlit keyboard, there are two options, either low or high. Battery performance has been the biggest disappointment so far in this notebook. On average, I'm getting around 2.5 to 3.5 hours with medium screen brightness and that's with casual usage like browsing the web, 
word processing, and watching YouTube and Netflix. I really wish Lenovo would have stuck with the 60 watt hour battery pack like the one found in the Y700. That would have given you much better performance. And you do get a pretty beefy power adapter here coming in at 135 watts. Here's a quick sample of the 720p HD webcam. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Another cost cutting move here are the speakers. The drivers found on the Y700 are JBL based and this one features a regular set of drivers. First of all, it doesn't have that nice low end kick because the subwoofer is missing, and the mids and highs I would have to say are about average. So let's get to the conclusion of the IdeaPad 700. If my budget is under 900 bucks, I would rather put my money on the Dell Inspiron 7559. First of all, you get the faster and more capable 960M and it's $100 cheaper. Or you can step up to the Y700, which usually starts at 849. You also get the 960M, but the downside here is the slow 1TB mechanical hard drive pretty much like the 7559. But those drives are easily upgradable, and in return you also get a much bigger battery pack compared to the IdeaPad 700. Alright guys, this about wraps up my full review on the Lenovo IdeaPad 700. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to smash on that like button, and don't forget to sub. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.